Hello and welcome back to my channel. And for those who don't know me yet, I'm Christian and I create tech reviews mainly about cameras. However, this time it's different. In one of my last videos, I reviewed my preferred travel lens, the Sony 24 to 105mm f4.0 OSS for my Sony a7 IV. Since I bought it just before our trip to Japan and used it for about 80% of my time there for both videos and photos, I decided to incorporate our journey into the video. Thanks to this video and discussions in my private life, many people wanted to know about our trip, especially how did we plan it. That's why this video is different. 8 things you must know before traveling to Japan. So sit down, grab some snacks and let's get started. Some years ago we decided to visit in Japan because we've always been fascinated by the culture, the country, the people and everything there. 2023 Japan, here we come. But aside from booking a long haul flight, more than 10,000 km, that isn't exorbitantly expensive, there were a few things to take care of before the trip. I highly recommend these steps to anyone planning a trip to Japan. We did a lot of research, watched numerous YouTube videos, made various purchases and bookings in advance. Oh, and before I forget, this video is not sponsored or paid in any way. All website brands, booking or products are mentioned in this video were results of our research. We simply choose what offered the best value for our money. Since we booked our Japan trip for only 14 days, we had to buy some experience along the way especially in theme parks, but more on that later. Anyways, I will provide you with all the links we used in the description down below. Maybe it helps you as well. All right, that's settled. I would say now let's go to the most important part and no, it's not the flight, it's travel insurance. When booking an expensive trip, it's essential not to skimp on this because what happens if you can't go on the trip to to illness or to other unforeseen events. You will be glad you didn't lose your money when you're already frustrated about missing your vacation. After all, it allows you to rebook your vacation quickly. We have travel insurance that automatically renews every year. And that's a good thing because you never know what might happen, especially when planning so far in advance. With a sense of security, we moved on to booking our flights. In general, flights are cheaper when booked well in advance, so that's what we did. I spent a good one to two weeks in September 2022 checking flight prices daily on several flight comparison websites like checkfelixbooking.com or directly on the airline's websites. The result, direct flights usually cost twice as much, flights with more than one stop are a hassle. Tuesdays and Wednesdays are the cheapest days from flying from in our case Vienna, Austria, basically Central Europe, to Japan via Frankfurt or Zurich. And if you book further back into July, you can save even more money. So I booked the flights at the end of September for July to August 2023, almost a year in advance, and that turned out to be a smart move. Just a comparison, the flight cost doubled two to three months before departure. All right, flights are sorted, let's move on to number three, accommodations. We needed a hotel in Tokyo and one in Kyoto. Ultimately, we booked all our hotels through booking.com because firstly, we didn't have to make any upfront payments. And secondly, the hotels could be canceled free of charge up to a week before the trip. For our hotel in Tokyo, we wanted it to be near Disneyland and Disney Sea, since we plan to spend two days there. In the end, we decided on a Disney Partner Hotel close to the two Disney parks based on the value for money. Breakfast was included. However, for the second week, we had four days planned in Kyoto with a stop at Universal Studios in Osaka. So we decided to spend an additional three nights in Kyoto, two in a modern hotel and one night in a traditional hotel for the experience. We booked both hotels via booking.com as well with payment upon arrival and no cancellation fees until short before the trip. And what can I say, we were more than satisfied with them. All right, that covers the hotels. As a tech enthusiast, I immediately thought about number four, 
Internet access. After a quick search, there are two options. You can either rent a SIM card locally, also with the option of telephone calls and insert in into your phone or rent a portable Wi-Fi hotspot. We have chosen the hotspot because we wanted to connect multiple devices to our portable Wi-Fi internet. We rented our Wi-Fi hotspot for 14 days from Japan Experience and picked it up simply at the airport near the arrival area. After the trip you can easily return the hotspot using the provided return envelope by dropping it into a mailbox at the airport for free. At Narita it was prominently located in red right in front of the security checkpoint for easy access. Since we are already talking about the webpage Japan Experience, we plan to take the Shinkansen, the bullet train from Tokyo to Kyoto and then to Osaka. For tourists, there is a cost-effective option day, number 5, GR Pass. Only tourists can get it and you need to buy it online before your trip. You can now also do this through the official website, but we choose to purchase it through Japan Experience. We did this about one to two months before the trip. The prices may seem high at first glance and it's not worth if you're staying in just one city like Tokyo where the subway isn't included and it's primarily mode of transportation within the city. However, if you plan to take the bullet train to places like Kyoto, Osaka, Mount Fuji or Hiroshima, you will recover the cost with just two longer journeys, for example, you pay 100 euros from Tokyo to Kyoto. In comparison, you pay 200 euro per adult for unlimited use for seven days, with children under 11 paying half price. You can also use the GR Lines trains within the city and save some additional transportation cost with a separate ticket. So why did we buy the passes one to two months before the trip? Simply because they sent you the printed vouchers by mail that you must exchange for the actual GR Pass in Japan. The process is straightforward and having the GR Pass also gives you free seat reservations, which would otherwise cost extra. However, the vouchers are only valid for three months, so don't buy them too early. But don't wait too long either, so they arrive at your home before the trip, in our case via FedEx. It took only three to four business days for us, but we were glad we ordered them early enough. You can't get the GR Pass in Japan itself, tourists or not, you make sure you have everything in order before your trip. Regarding subway cards, we could have ordered them in advance, but various YouTube videos explained how to easily obtain them from machines, so we decided to do it on site, which worked out very well. Alright, now we have our insurance, flight tickets, the hotels, our internet Wi-Fi hotspot and the GR Pass. Let's talk about something that should only interest you if you plan to visit Disneyland Tokyo, Disney Sea Tokyo and or Universal Studios in Osaka, Japan. We visited all three amusement parks and must admit that we were glad to be there. So number six is theme parks. Theme park tickets, since we had never been to Disneyland or Universal Studios before, this was completely new territory for us. What we knew is that there are long waiting times and everything is quite expensive. Well, you don't do this kind of thing not very often in life, so I did some research here as well. Let's start with Disneyland and Disney Sea. Just for clarification, Disneyland is the classic Disneyland with the Disney characters and specific rides. Disney Sea is unique to Japan and is more suitable for older children, while Disneyland is more for the little ones. I knew I wanted to buy the tickets in advance, so I went to the official Tokyo Disneyland website and was also redirected to various international websites selling tickets. After comparing options, I decided to purchase the Disneyland and Disney Sea tickets through KK Day. It worked smoothly, we received the tickets directly in our email inbox and we could scan them digitally at the entrance and go inside. Just a heads up, we bought one day passes and once you're inside the park for the day, you can't leave and re-enter. These tickets were easily to obtain and we bought them about one month before our trip, selecting specific days we had planned. Fast lane or express passes were not available in advance for Disney, which in my opinion is a much better system than at Universal Studios, but more on that later. At Disney, you can use an app in the park to get free passes, free fast passes or buy them for an additional cost. 
it was convenient and you could decide on the spot whether it was worth spending extra money based on the displayed waiting times. Universal Studios, on the other hand, was a different story. It was a bit more cumbersome and complicated. We spent three days trying to buy tickets on various websites and found that buying tickets one month in advance was almost too late because the open ticket sales three months in advance. So make sure to check well in advance and secure your Universal Studios tickets. In our case, almost everything was sold out. The ticketing system for additional fast passes was down for two days. And in the end, we managed to get tickets for the time slot we had planned. Unfortunately, this was even more critical here than at Disney because we were staying next to the Disney parks in Japan. The Universal Studios are in Osaka, which is about a 3.5 hour journey from Tokyo by bullet train. So we had to plan it down to the exact day. Plus, we really wanted to visit the Super Nintendo World, which until recently was only available there. Now there's one in Hollywood, USA as well. And without a ticket, it's a gamble whether you will even get inside due to the huge demand. Anyway, in the end, we got the tickets with an additional expensive 7 Combi Express Pass. Since we won't be going back there anytime soon, it turned out to be a good decision and we spent a fun time there without any long waiting times. So we had our theme park tickets in advance, check that off the list. Oh, and before I forget, it's not necessarily required, but we did it anyway. We, number seven, exchange currency yen at the bank before the trip. Of course, there are fees when exchanging money locally, but in Japan you can withdraw money with European Maestro cards and credit cards, MasterCard and Visa at every 7-Eleven supermarket with a reasonable fee. And there are convenience stores on practically every corner. If you plan to do this and it works well, we even paid with Maestro card at the McDonald's terminal, make sure to inform your bank that you intend to make withdrawals abroad, outside of Europe, America or wherever you may be. Otherwise, your transaction might be declined or worse, your card could be blocked due to fraud concerns. And because at least with our mobile plan, one minute of roaming costs about 5 euro, contacting your bank beyond that would be very expensive. Keep this in mind. So let's come to the last point in our planning session 8, the 14 days Japan schedule. Two weeks sounds like an average time for vacation, but it isn't close to enough. Therefore, it's even more important to create a schedule. I will show you right now our plan and what we achieved there. First of all, we created a simple Excel file with all the days we are there and then we wrote a list that we want to do. Based on that list, we also checked out what the best days for traveling by the bullet train to Kyoto and Osaka is and in the end, we hadn't really a lot of choices left. As mentioned, we booked our flights on Tuesday, we had a night flight and we also had to calculate in that there is a time zone difference of 7 hours. So we will lose altogether around about 2 days, so only 12 full days left. We arrived on Wednesday, but this day is already over. We landed at 5 pm and arrived at the hotel at 7 pm and we were tired. So we only discovered the hotel, bought some food and slept very quickly. On Thursday we headed straight to the Tokyo Skytree. The Tokyo Skytree, standing at a towering height of 634 meters, offers breathtaking panoramic views of Tokyo and Mount Fuji, making it an iconic landmark and observation deck in Japan. After our visit, we then went to the attached mall to get our first impressions of the Japanese lifestyle. On Friday we went to Tokyo Disneyland. It's a magical and enchanting theme park located in Uroyasu, Chiba, Japan. It opened in 1983 and has since become a beloved destination for both locals and tourists, featuring iconic attractions, beloved Disney characters and a unique blend of Japanese and Disney culture. After a beautiful but tiring day, we concluded our stay at Disneyland with a magnificent parrot. We skipped Saturday because exhaustion caught up with us. On Sunday we headed to the Meiji Shingu Shrine and the famous Takeshita Street. The Meiji Shingo Shrine, located in the heart of Tokyo, is a sacred Shinto shrine dedicated to Emperor Meiji and Empress Shokan, offering visitors a peaceful retreat from the bustling city. After that we went to Takeshita Street, commonly known as Takeshita Dori. 
It is a vibrant and bustling pedestrian shopping street in Tokyo's Harajuku district, renowned for its eclectic fashion boutiques and trendy pop culture shops. We ended the day with a visit in the Tokyo Metropolitan Government building the tallest city hall in the world and a night trip to Shinjuku. Shinjuku is a bustling commercial and entertainment district in Tokyo known for its iconic skyscrapers, vibrant nightlife with lots of neon signs and the busiest railway station in the world, serving as a central hub for for both locals and tourists. On Monday we went to Tokyo DisneySea. It's a unique and immersive Disney theme park located near Disneyland Tokyo, known for its nautical and adventure themed attractions set with a beautiful designed seaside environment. On Tuesday we planned our day for Shibuya. Shibuya Crossing in the heart of Tokyo's Shibuya district is one of the world's busiest pedestrian crossings, creating a mesmerizing spectacle as a sea of people crisscrosses in every direction during rush hours. But we didn't just cross it, we also went to the Shibuya Sky Tower to see the crossing from above. After that we visited the statue of Hachiko, the faithful Akita dog celebrated and remembered in Tokyo for his unwavering loyalty to his owner, who faithfully waited at Shibuya station for nearly 10 years even after his owner's passing. Our next stop was Parko Center where we shopped at the Nintendo Store and Pokemon Center. Another attraction in Shibuya is the Pepper Parlor, a popular restaurant in Tokyo known for its use of pepper robots to assist with customer service, providing a unique and futuristic dining experience that we really enjoyed. Wednesday was the day we took the Shinkansen the bullet train to Kyoto where we walked to the Kamagowa River and visited the famous Gion area and took an awesome picture of the famous shrine there. On Thursday we took four different trains to stay at Universal Studios Osaka. It offers a thrilling and immersive theme park experience with a range of iconic attractions including Super Nintendo World and entertainment options making it a must-visit destination for fans of movies like Jaws, Harry Potter, Spider-Man and many more, as well as theme park enthusiasts. On Friday, we then went to the Kiyomitsu Dera Temple, a UNESCO World Heritage Site famous for its stunning wooden terrace that offers breathtaking panoramic views of the city and its beautiful architecture dating back to the 8th century. In the evening, we visited Mi Peak, where you can enjoy a drink with miniature pigs before spending our last night in a traditional hotel in Kyoto called Ryokan. On Saturday we took the Shikansen then back to Tokyo. On Sunday we visited Team Lab Borderless Tokyo, a cutting-edge digital art museum in Odaiba, Tokyo, offering a mesmerizing and immersive experience where art, technology and imagination come together to create a unique, ever-changing world of interactive artworks. We finished our day with a walk along Tokyo Bay and checked out the giant 20 meter 65 foot Gundam robot before exploring the surrounding environment. On Monday we just visited some malls close to the hotel, had some walks and packed for the flight home, which we did on Tuesday. Alright, uh, what else? Well, perhaps it's worth mentioning that we hadn't taken a long distance trip in over 10 years and our flight from Vienna to Frankfurt and then onward to Tokyo lasted nearly 15 hours. So we also took along or acquired a few things online to make our flight more comfortable, especially since it included a night flight noise reduction headphones, a neck pillow, an inflatable leg rest pillow and so on. I will be happy to link these items in the description via Amazon affiliate link so that you can access our list. Plus, you will be supporting the channel if you order through their links and we appreciate that. Thank you very much in advance. I hope I haven't forgotten anything. If you have any more questions about planning your trip to Japan or need further information, please let me know in the comments and I will try to answer them as soon as possible. Alright, I hope I could assist you. If you enjoyed the video, I would greatly appreciate your subscription and likes. If you're heading to Japan soon, I wish you all the best. Have a lot of fun. Sayonara. See you next time.